So I decided to do a little video on my upgrade on this Tentrax trailer. If anybody's, any of you have watched any of my other videos, you've probably seen this Tentrax trailer because we've been using this now for quite a few years. And we're, um, you know, we're mixed bag of happiness with it. It's, it's a good trailer for what we're using it for. We just, we have extra space. We originally got it when we had a two-door Jeep and um, we needed the extra space. So we wanted something that would carry cargo, a little bit extra cargo. And then we, uh, you know, it's got a tent on top. It's got a rooftop tent, if you will. It's on top of the trailer. So at any rate, um, the biggest problem we've had is, and we haven't actually had this problem. It's just a anticipation of a future event. Um, you know, if we had a flat on the trailer, there is no spare. So, you know, I do have a plug kit and, you know, if it was a puncture that I can repair, then, then that's, that's not a problem. <clears throat> However, if the uh, Jeep got two tires flat, it would sh certainly be uh, beneficial for us to be able to switch these tires out. Um, take you know we have a spare on the jeep and another spare by if these tires fit the jeep we could use that for a um another spare so that would give us effectively two different spares so three different spares if you consider there's two tires on this trailer so at any rate my decision was to change the hubs over to uh the hub the hub pattern that came with the trailer does not fit the Jeep. So I had to buy new hubs uh, and the tires were getting a little bit thin on this trailer. And so I went ahead and plus this is 15 inch, these are 15 inch rims and the Jeep takes 17 inch rims. So I had to change everything over. So uh, anyway, I had to order new rib, new hubs, new rims and bought some new tires. For the trailer there's one of them right there so just dawned me that uh you know anybody that has one of these trailers that that wants to con convert it over to fit the jeep tires um just a thing that people do um i just thought maybe i do i haven't found any information on the internet um uh, too much nothing on youtube that i could find uh, for this specific trailer and converting the uh, hubs so I thought I'd do a little a little tutorial on on what I'm doing and how and how I'm doing it the conversion itself is a little pricey I ordered the hubs from Tentrax which I could have ordered directly from e-trailer, which is where they got them. And I, I looked at the ones on e-trailer. I wasn't really sure which ones to, to order. So I wanted guaranteed fit. So I went ahead and went through the Tentrax people and um, Brent at Tech Tentrax uh, spec them out for me, made it real easy to order them. So I did. Uh, paid extra for them, but you know that's if you want them cheaper, you can you can get them directly from e from e trailer. Um, they have all different hubs. I ran into a couple of little issues um, with the hubs. The uh, the center uh, of the hub won't go through the t won't go through the hole in the rim. This hole right here is too small for the hub. So there's a fix, and the fix is to put a spacer on the hub to, uh, to bring it out, which also lines the tire up better in the wheel well. So they don't make any hubs that have a, a, um, the size that goes through these rims. The axles on this trailer are a Dexter, it's a Dexter Torque Flex axle. It's a uh, torsion torsion suspension, uh, so there's no springs. Uh, the torsion suspension, as I was reading about it, not the best for off-road vehicles, but so far we've got thousands of miles and a lot of hard miles on this trailer, and we haven't had any trouble with it. So I'm 
keeping my fingers crossed that that continues. Here's the axle, and here's the connection to the wheel in the in the hub. It's, it's the axle goes all the way across, but um, and bolts on. So I imagine you could replace it if you had to, or if you wanted to. Unless I have problems with it, I'm going to keep it. So it's a 1,000 pound axle, but it has 3,500 pound uh, uh, hubs on it. And the ones that, the new hubs are also 3,500 pound hubs. I tried to match up the tires to the Jeep, the tires, and I bought some tires from Les Schwab. We like to do business with Les Schwab. Um, and um, so I bought tires from them. They didn't have any that match the size of the jeep in fact they told me that jeep size is a weird size so and maybe it is um at any rate um i got some that are very almost the same so the uh size of the tire that goes on here is very similar to the one that's coming off of it the one that's on it has a uh, is on a 15 inch rim and the 17 inch rim so there's less rubber but the height is about the same. So that's all you can uh, ask for here. The hubs that came from e-trailer, uh, again, you can order these your own, you know, you can order these direct if you know exactly what you're ordering. And I didn't, I didn't know this, the spindle size or anything like that. So I wanted to make sure they fit. They, and they do, they come with the extra they come with lots of extra stuff. They have several extra caps, and they have one here with a Zerk cover, so you can use it. But this is the... And the hubs come pre-packed with... Uh, the bearings are in here pre-packed with grease, so you don't have to do anything to the bearings. You just put it on which is really kind of cool they got caps on both sides so they keeps the bearings from falling out when you're installing them you have to pull the caps off of course but um it's this part here that sticks up that wouldn't fit through the hole in the rim so that's the one so the spacers it's a two inch spacer that goes in here these things bolt down to the spacer then the spacer has studs on it that the tire itself bolts onto so uh, you'll see that. Okay, getting these hubs off is pretty simple. Underneath this is a nut that has, has to come out, to come off. And um, getting this little cap off is usually a little tricky. Doesn't seem to want to come off too easy. The last one, the one on the other side, was very difficult. This big nut here has a keeper that has to be taken off. Some of them have a uh, have a cotter pin here and keeps the keeps the nut from turning. This one here just has this keeper that you pop off of here. And this keeper just has a flat spot that matches the flat spot on the spindle. And then when you put it back on, that just keeps it in place. 
this bearing was worn down pretty good, I, which is what prompted me to do this whole job. Figured I need to replace the bearings, I might as well just replace the hubs. This bearing is, is pretty loose, but it's loose enough that I was concerned about it being worn. The one on the other side was loose too, but it wasn't that loose. And, uh, and uh, it didn't show a whole lot of wear on the bearing. So when I looked at the bearing, it really wasn't bad. But it doesn't matter. I am replacing these bearings anyway. So there's, uh, there's the, the washer. And then, I mean, there's the, the nut, then there's a washer behind it. And that washer will come off when you pop this off. The bearing will fall out too if you're not careful. But the washer comes off. And uh, when you put it back together, you got to make sure you put the washer back in there. And this is the old hub. The seal was leaking a little bit on the back side, it looks like, but it doesn't really matter. It's all going bye bye. So, one thing I did that I'm going to do again here, that I did on the other side, was I pumped a little grease through it to push some of that old grease out of the, the zerk that's right here in the middle. I pushed some new grease through there because there's a lot of old grease in there. From It wasn't for me because I never gave this thing any grease because it had these hub covers. And I never knew there was any grease cirques there, so I didn't, never greased them. Um, the new ones that I'm putting on will have, uh, will be accessible for me to put grease in. Although, according to guys that do, um, that do wheel bearings, uh, it's, they say it's better to just repack the wheel bearings than it is to pump grease in these things constantly because you can get too much grease in them and uh, blow it out, push it out past the seal. There's a seal that goes right on the back here that's going to seal the back of this. Which is, it's got a little dirt on it or something, I don't know. Pump some grease in it. You'll see there's some grease come out of this. will come out the grease hole back here that will be pretty funky looking. black I've got red grease in here right now so I'm just going to pump it until I see red grease coming out like right there okay a little grease on that I have to give it to E-Trailer for making it easy. They, with them having the bearings completely repacked and and installed in the in the hub, takes all the guesswork out of it. When you get the get ready to put the new hubs in, you just got to pop this cover off. And the new seals right here and this thing slips over here got to take the front one off too and the bearing will pop out of there if you're not careful okay it's pretty much as simplistic as you can make it got to make sure you put the washer back in And then the nut. The nut, actually, I don't know if there's one side that's better than the other. One side's got writing on it, and one side doesn't. So I put the writing on the, there's some writing on the 
nut here. So I made sure I used the side that doesn't have the writing on the inside. Don't know if that's necessary or required or don't know much about that. But Anyway, it's probably pretty much all you need to do. Now the only thing is there's another, and I'm no expert at this, there's some videos I've seen on guys that are showing how to do this. By the way, it's an inch and a half. It takes an inch and a half socket, which I actually happen to have. Surprise. But what you do when you put this back in is you have to pre preload it a little bit. You have to tighten it up because I'm pushing it in there so that it's seating in. And you want to Make sure it turns. They say to turn it, they say to tighten it up until it's binding, you can feel it binding, and then back it off enough, and then back it off until it feels more free. About right there. Maybe a little bit more. The thing about it is, what I found out from doing the other side was that to get the keeper on there, uh, you may need to readjust it because the keeper has to go on a certain way and it says that flat spot matches up with the flat spot on the, on the keeper. And so if your nut's not lined up correctly, if it's tweaked a little bit, it won't go on. So you've got to make sure that you can get your keeper on there and then it just snaps on easier said than done it does snap on pretty easy actually if you don't tweak it like I did now I can see why it's not going because it's not it needs to be turned just a hair Once you get it in the right spot, which I apparently don't have, Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I saw online about how to do this says that you should put it together, make sure it turns freely, and then take it out on the road and uh, run it around a little bit and then come back and check it again to make sure that it's still tight. But it's not too tight, but it's not too loose. So I think I'm good there, and I'm going to put 
put a cap back on. I've got new caps to put on. I could use the old one, but it may... That one was easy to get on. Some of the new caps, I gave myself a blood blister on one finger trying to put the cap on it, hitting it with a hammer. So let me go get a new cap. This is one of the new ones. I tried putting these on with a rubber hammer and it didn't seem to work as well as using a metal hammer. Rubber just gives too much. Okay, got that on all the way around. So, that's getting the hub on. Next will come the spacers. Okay, so here's what the spacers look like. Big old hunk of aluminum. It's over the studs and brings the brings the whole unit out to where you can put those rims over the top of them. And also, like I said, according to Brent from the uh, 10 tracks, he says that they also it also helps to recenter the wheel and the wheel well because the stock wheels that came with this thing have a different hub set set up. At any rate, uh, so that's the now the Brent told me there's a the couple of tricks to do, to make sure that I did is is to use thread locker. So I got blue. I don't have any red, but I have blue Loctite. So I'm going to put some Loctite on these. And um, oops. And then to use, he said also to use the nuts that come with the, the spacers instead of the lug nuts that are on the hub, which I would do anyway probably. Some people have a nice garage to work in or concrete driveway, something like that. Nah, I'm working, in the, I'm working out here in the dirt. Uh, actually, it's in the grass. So, see how the tires go on. Looks like it is centered in there in the wheel well pretty good. That's a good deal. So, finished product on the trailer. I'd take the trailer for a little test run, make sure wheel bearings are in there correctly. I'm sure they are. So, yeah, the wheels are centered quite well in the wheel well. So that's that spacer. Is definitely the ticket for that. So, the only thing I got to do now is buy some little Jeep things, little Jeep plugs that go in the holes there. 
can snap in there just to cover that up. Pretty it up. 